It was Ford versus Ford for Scoon travelled across the Tay to neighbours Canoole at Tullock Park. It was the second weekend in a row that Schoon were involved in a derby game, and just like last week's game against Lunkerty, it was to prove a tight affair between the teams. On the last occasion the clubs had met at Tullock Park, it was a one-all draw, and the expectations were that yet again a draw would be a possible outcome. The opening moments of the game, however, didn't suggest that a close game was in hand. After Canoole took the lead with only three minutes gone. The ball is eventually worked out to Mackie on the left hand side, and when he crosses into the centre, there's Kinnear to pounce from just inside the six yard box. Good vision from Mackie to cross into the centre there, and despite the foul committed in the middle there, Kinnear manages to pounce to put his side ahead. Despite the loss of the early goal, Schoon were to go on to dominate the first 45 minutes. After 6 minutes, Schoon managed to break down a Canoe attack, and quick play to pass the ball forward saw the ball released eventually to Max Avolio inside the Canoe half of the pitch. A great break forward from Avolio, an excellent save by Canoe keeper Chammers, and again another good save from the rebound from Strachan. With 18 minutes gone, Schoon were to level the game. Again, good play up the left hand side saw the ball played forward by Mackenzie, an excellent defence splitting pass to Avolio, and good skill from the follow for Athletic loan player to cross the ball into the centre, and there's Gary Fergus to provide the finish right in front of goal. Good play from Avolio to get into space and put the cross into the centre and then an excellent run from Gary Fergus to go into space and provide the finish off the legs of Burton. Mm -hmm. Moments later Schoon had another chance on goal when a free kick was awarded just outside the area. Up stepped Kevin Sinkler with the free kick, however his goal effort was deflected for a corner by Burton. Chalmers then came to Canoe's rescue after 23 minutes with an excellent reaction save. The ball from a corner is eventually worked into the middle to Fraser Mills and his first time effort sees a very brave effort and great save by Chalmers to deny the goal. It did result in a long period of treatment for the canoe keeper, however thankfully he was able to continue. Play switched to the other end of the pitch and Canoe created their own chance here, however on this occasion Kinnear's shot goes wide of target. Schoon were controlling much of the play at this point and were managing to restrict the host side to efforts of target. On this occasion it's a long range effort from Tom White which goes past the post. With 37 minutes gone Schoon were to take the lead their play deserved. A partial clearance from Whitworth was blocked to the edge of the area but picked up by Gary Fergus. After playing the ball up to McKenzie, he slipped the ball forward to Fraser Mills, who showed great awareness to stay on side and gather the ball before going through and goal. Great play from Mills here to get inside the box here, and despite the backtracking of Gray, a good finish from Mills to give Chalmers no chance. It's the Jag Strikers 18th goal of the season. Kino had the final chance of the first half when they were awarded a corner with 43 minutes gone. The ball was partially cleared, comes as far as Burton, however his effort is high, wide and not very handsome. Schoon were to start off the second half how they had finished the first, by putting plenty pressure on the Canoe goal. And again it was a case of breaking down the Canoe attacks before a quick counter attack. On this occasion the ball eventually comes to McKenzie and his effort from just outside the area goes wide of target. Coming up, one of the moves which had it been a goal would have certainly been one of the candidates for goal of the season. The ball again is broken down at the edge of the Schoon box before being raced to Avolio. Avolio passes to McKenzie who then plays it forward to Mills. He then brings Avolio back into play and then an excellent little shimmy here from Max Avolio to manage to get into space, cross into the centre and a good header from Fraser Mills but unfortunately hits the bar. Canoe were slowly starting to take control of the game and after 56 minutes saw an excellent save from Josh Gorton prevent the equaliser. Good play on the left saw the ball played forward and when it comes in to Davies his effort is well blocked by the screen keeper. As they had in the first half, Canoe were to be a bit wasteful with some of their chances in front of goal. On this occasion, after 57 minutes, they were awarded a free kick on the edge of the area. White's effort was off target, however was blocked by the defence for a corner. And when the corner was eventually swung into the box, up stepped Gray, however his header wide of target. 
Around the hour mark, play was continuing to go from end to end, however without either keeper being seriously troubled. On this occasion, the ball eventually becomes the possession of Canul. It's crossed into the middle here and picked up by Rhys Davis, however he pulls his effort wide of target. Play then goes to the other end of the park, and after the throw is taken into the centre here, Mills manages to lay the ball into the middle to Strachan, however he pulls his effort wide of target. And it was Strachan who was to have the next effort for Schoon after 66 minutes. A corner into the canoe box, partially clear to the edge, and when Mills lays the ball off to the left to Strachan, his cross into the centre looks like it might be dipping in just before the crossbar, however it beats the crossbar. With 70 minutes gone, Kinu were to get back in level terms, and there was a lot of luck involved in the host side's goal. With the ball bobbling about the midfield area, it's eventually cleared forward by Greg White. Davis appears to barge, lying off the ball as he goes in for the challenge. However, the referee allowed play to continue. The ball falls to Smith, and as he's moving across goal, a challenge from Moon sees the ball ricochet off Whitworth and over Gorton into goal. Better angle here on the move. Smith here picking up the ball, his first touch a bit heavy takes it away from him, but as Moon comes in from the left here, his challenge ricochets off Whitworth in the middle there and into the back of the net. Schoon's bad luck was to continue as they were denied a clear penalty moments later. The ball is eventually won by the Schoon defence and when Fergus plays it forward to Sinclair, his diagonal ball goes across to Mackay. Mackay then manages to move into the box and as he's moving forward, Burton appears to body check the Schoon attacker. You can see on the replay here that certainly Burton does move in here and take the legs of the Schoon attacker. However, the referee had plenty of bodies between the incident and himself, and without the benefit of replay, can be excused the decision. Can over to be next on the attack, and when the ball was played forward here to Smith, he sees a great save from Gorton to prevent the winning goal. Canoe continued to attack, and on this occasion, when Davis goes through in goal, his effort is kind of a cross come shot, but cleared by the Schoon defence. Corner swung into the middle, but on this occasion, the ball comes to Smith, and he sees his effort cleared off the line by Gary Fergus. Corner into the box taken and the ball comes to Gray but his header over the bar. Player returns to the other end of the pitch and on this occasion when the ball comes into the middle it's partially cleared and eventually falls to Sean Fergus but his effort is over the bar. Skin continued to press for a winner and after a free kick was awarded after 84 minutes Fergus is ball into the box, can't quite break for Abby Nige and the ball is eventually cleared before the Skin striker can manage to pounce. Schoon had the next opportunity and when the ball is eventually picked up on the right hand side it's worked into the centre by Mackay and when Gary Fergus has his efforts it just rises over the bar. Kinnell were to have the final effort on target of the game after 86 minutes. The ball is swung into the box and when it's partially cleared it's picked up and swung out to the left hand side and there's Smith to pounce but his effort is held by Gordon. Free kick into the area sees a header off target by Gray, and in the dying moments there's just time for one final effort for the home side, when the ball is crossed into the centre here, there is Kieran Donald with the effort off target. Thoughts by some of the home support that the goal had been scored? Very well mocked by the Schoon fans on the other side of the pitch. That was it for the game and the teams drew 2 all, a result which suits the home side better than Schoon, with Canule being 3 points behind but with 2 games in hand. Jags now return to home business next Saturday when a row fix of the visitors to Ferguson Park. The match has a 2.30pm kickoff. That's all for Skin Sport this weekend. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.